Hello and welcome. This is View from the Top and I am Modeli Sharafa Yusuf. I thank you for joining us. There are many big things about Nigeria. It's the second largest producer of movies in the world and the largest producer of oil on the continent. It is the continent's biggest economy and has the world's largest diversity of butterflies. Nigeria also is also the eighth most populous nation in the world. However, the true number of Nigerians has always remained a matter of estimates. Currently, Nigeria's population is said to be between 160 and 167 million, or sometimes 170 million, based on projections from the 2006 census, which at that time put the nation's population at 140 million. Apart from the grudgingly accepted figures from the 1963 census, any other one has been hotly disputed. As for the next headcount, the controversy started well before the 2016 date. Eze Festus Odimegu was appointed chairman of the National Population Commission and tasked with conducting critical census in 2016. But despite expectations based on his record in the in private business, he couldn't stay long enough to deliver on his mandate. He was only chairman of the commission for about 16 months before resigning. More famous for his tenure as MD of Nigerian Breweries, he kindly joins me today to discuss a wide range of issues, including partisan politics, the politics of the census, management of multinationals, and the general state of the nation. Thank you, Your Royal Majesty. Thank you, Madela, for having me. We'll get down to the conversation shortly, but here is a brief biography first. Eze Festus Odimegu was born on August 7, 1953. He was educated at the University of Nigeria in Suka, from where he graduated with a first-class degree in chemistry, and Harriet Watt University, Edinburgh, where he obtained his Master of Science degree. He also attended Stanford University Graduate School of Business, Watin Business School, and Unilever Four Acres Training Center. Eze Odimogu joined Nigeria Breweries PLC as a trainee brewer in 1980. In a career that spanned 26 years, he rose through the ranks to become sales director, marketing director, Lever Brothers Ghana, and finally MD CEO of Nigerian Breweries. In 2012, Eze Festus Kodimegu was appointed chairman of the National Population Commission. But earlier, he ran for the Imo State governorship seat on the platform of the PDP. You are one of those who are incensed by INEC's decision to postpone the elections. But in view of the security advisory, what other options were open to Professor Jaga and his team? Well, you know, the postponement of the election is very unfortunate because Jega already announced that INEC was ready to conduct the election. Even the service chiefs had announced that they are ready for the election. So without any doubt, it was the presidency that put pressure on them to postpone the election because the presidency was afraid that if the election took place on 14th of February, that he will have a massive defeat. APC would have had a landslide. So the first consideration is that the presidency wanted to slow down the momentum towards Buhari. And that is rigging with incumbency power, as it were. That is what it is. Every other argument up and down is not important. What happened is most unfortunate. But this is the aspect Nigerians, most Nigerians know, that the presidency forced the hand of INEC to postpone the election. If I was the chairman of INEC, I would not postpone the election. I will run the election as scheduled, and I will tell the president that it is his duty to provide security for the nation. And then the rest of the world will watch. And if he tries to force it physically, I will resign. So Jega's credibility is at stake, as far as I'm concerned. But there was the security advisory saying, you know... It's all contrived. There is no insecurity. Boko Haram is in 12, 14 local governments out of 774. We can have a peaceful election. And in any case, the chief of defense staff had said almost a week or two before that we are ready. Jega himself, himself has said, we are ready so, until the National Security Advisor, professionals who pander to political inclinations, which is why Nigeria is in the mess that it is, began to suggest, let us postpone the election. There was no reason whatsoever to postpone the election. We are saying that the military has been compromised. 
The military has been compromised a long time ago when you let corruption that comes from the top seep in all aspects of our national life. It is because the military is compromised that the war on Boko Haram is lasting and soldiers are running away. You read the papers. We shouldn't be discussing this because I don't like talking for the sake of talking. The military has been compromised a long time ago. So but what will happen when we keep dragging institutions like the security agencies into politics? It is very dangerous. The military being involved, the danger, the real danger, is that Jonathan lost control a long time ago that these people have subtly hijacked the military and they are using them for their own aims when Jonathan thinks it is helping him to get organized and win. And the consequences of that is that Nigerians should be very, very vigilant. I will even say that APC should make sure that General Buhari's life is safe because the people that are contriving all these things are very vicious. It is not PDP. It is the presidency and PDP playing into their hands without knowing that they are playing into their hands. And that is the danger of the military being involved. Before we leave the issue of elections, do you really believe that NEC was ready for those elections? And could this INEC, be a blessing in disguise? INEC conducted the election in 2011. And since then, INEC has even gotten better. So if the election of 2011 was enough to put President Jonathan in office, now that they have gotten better, done better elections in Edoekiti and so on and so forth, whatever state they are in, they will do a better job on 14th of February, which they were not allowed to do. So INEC, of course, is ready. Why are things like religion and tribe still important in Nigerian politics? Look at what uh, President Jonathan is doing. Religion and ethnicity and tribe has been part of the instrument the politicians of Nigeria have used to gain votes. They will say, oh, you are Igbo, you are outside your Yoruba, oh, your church. It shouldn't be. We should look at 